lot of people go into this for the wrong reasons. If you go in to film for fame or for money, you will massively fail. If your ambition is only to be ambitious, then you won't do well. career in film would have started off as a where I would have been a runner and then I worked my way up to an assistant costume designer and I worked as an assistant costume designer for about five years assisting as many costume designers as I could hopefully I think some of the best ones working. After writing for theatre I started to write for television and in a way that was the sideways leap that was the stepping stone because I wrote I was, I was fortunate in that very early on in my career, my writing career, I, I got two series on television. When I started, it would be back in the 1950s, and I'd come out of the Navy. I'd done two years national service. In those days, men had to do two years in one of the armed forces. Uh, and I tried to get various jobs in commercial television, but I had no experience, so uh, that was fruitless. Eventually, I got a job as a teleprompter operator. I was working in an art store, selling art supplies. I actually was thinking I was going to be a painter. And a art director or a production designer for a big Hollywood movie that was shooting in New Jersey came in. She needed an assistant, and basically I quit my job there and then. Uh, I first started doing music promos and commercials and did a lot of experimental short films where I kind of tried and tested how I want to work with actors and what I wanted to do and what I as a filmmaker could bring to the table. I uh, did lots and lots of writing and uh, did, got lots of very well received scripts and then did a short film called Cold Kiss which uh, did very well critically and did very well in the film industry and then went on to Sket which was my debut feature film. <laughs> As a costume designer, I got my first break in the same way I think that most people I know do, where you get one of the designers that you assist can't, isn't available to do a job and recommends you if it's something that's a good size for somebody just coming up. And I was assisting a costume designer called Odile dix Miro, and Odile recommended me for a film called An American Haunting, which was set in... 1820s in rural Tennessee and we shot it in Romania with Donald Sutherland and Sissy Spacek and that was my first design credit, first costume design credit. I think my first break was when I worked at a place called Company Pictures and they do fantastic TV like Shameless and they have this great scheme there whereby as a runner you work you go there for two or three weeks as an unpaid runner in the office. But if they get a show commissioned in that time, you get the first right to interview for the runner job on that show, which is a paid job. One of my first breaks, I think, is when I met um, N-Dubs and did their first video, and it went on to Channel AKA. Um, I didn't really know much about that channel at that time, but it sort of went number one, and, um, and from there, that was, you know, quite a big thing for me because I sort of never had a sort of anything that had gone number one, but it actually went on to do three weeks at number one on the chart show. And, um, you know, so I think that was quite a big break into the sort of music video industry. Na -na. Na -na. Na Why don't you come over? Warm up your cold shoulder. Yeah, we can get crazy, baby, all night before we get sober. Look at yourself. Now that ain't good for my health. Well, I think the, de the definition of success really has to be defined by the person's own goals. I, I've met a lot of people who are successful who don't even think that they are successful themselves. I measure success, if I'm honest, by whether the people with whom I live every day have heard of anything that I do. I think probably in two different ways. I would say that there's the way of looking at success and thinking, oh, that person's won an Oscar or, you know, they've got BAFTA recognition and that's, that's a very successful career. But there are an awful lot of very hard-working 
heads of department without that recognition who are extremely successful. I think it's enjoying what you do and feeling like you're doing it well. I think anybody can be a successful filmmaker through just making something that they enjoy making and enjoy watching or sharing with other people. If it's YouTube or short film festival or a feature film, as long as you're getting your work out there and it's getting seen, then that's, that's pretty successful. The most valuable lesson that I probably learned um, is just to believe in yourself, to know that what you know is legitimate and to stick to that and not to get knocked off course really by other people. I know that making my feature film, a lot of people said you shouldn't do it that way. And, you know, maybe they were right, but I kind of feel like I've proved myself right now. You know, um, you can make a film under 100 grand, shoot it without any film money, work with refugees and asylum seekers and gypsies and travelers, improvise and film in Iran all at under 100 grand. The number of people who told me not to do that was immense. I think the most valuable lesson that I've learned in my career actually came quite far into my career when I thought I knew a lot about what I was doing and I produced my first feature film uh, with my partner Ben Pugh and um, it had been released and we thought it was great and it got really well reviewed. It was a film called Shifty and, um, and, it, and it did really well for a low budget film but we got all this way having learnt how to make a film and we think how to make a, a good film, like, you know, it was, it was a good film and we're really proud of it. But what we never had understood until that point, really, was understanding audiences. So the very first film that I wrote and directed a drama, which was called Suspect, was about a, um, a, a murder. A child goes missing and a, a middle class family, the, the, the father doesn't come home. So it's a thriller, basically it's a police thriller. The second film, which was called Rumour, is about freedom of the press. The third film is Carter. So basically, all the way down the line, I've tried to make films that are relevant to me and that I think are relevant to everybody else. My advice to up-and-coming filmmakers right now would be decide why you want to be a filmmaker. Decide what you want to do because it's huge. There's not just a director, a producer. Uh, there are so many jobs that need to be filled and so much talent needed. A lot of people instantly assume they'd love to be a director, but most people don't know what a director actually does because they only see directors on set or on DVD commentaries. You have to be very passionate about it because you're not going to get rich. <laughs> you're not going to have um, guaranteed um, job after job. It's one year you can have four films, next year you might only have one. Um, you've, got to, you've got to love the job, you've got to want to do it.